Hand over Hello, to you. everyone. How are you guys doing? Um, really excited to be here today. And it's awesome to be back on Apex Hours. I joined Apex Hours a few years back. Uh, I think it was 2019. And there is an introduction to Community Cloud out there. Obviously, it's been a little while since uh, it's not even called Community Cloud anymore. But uh, that was that was awesome. And maybe some of you saw that. Uh, actually, really thankful to have been a part of that. It's It kind of blows me away when I look at that a video on YouTube, uh, I was just looking at this morning, 56,000 views. So um, you've really done an amazing thing here with Apex Hours. Pretty cool stuff. Hopefully, uh, those who watch uh, got a lot of value out of it. Um, sales, while Salesforce CMS isn't quite as broadly reaching as Experience Cloud overall, I think it's something that everyone should be aware of. So we're going to be talking about that today. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let me introduce myself. I head up the product team at Seven Summits. Uh, we are now an IBM company. We were acquired at the beginning of last year. And uh, I've been working with the Salesforce platform for about 10 years now, a little over 10, I could say. Uh, really honored to be a Salesforce MVP. Very, um, you know, very much support of the certification program, 23 times certified. And I have a few books in print out. Uh, I have a book on... Community Cloud, actually, I just finished the draft of my second edition of that, which will be renamed to Practical Guide to Salesforce Experience Cloud. So uh, be looking for that. That'll come out. It'll, it'll have everything um, that was added over the past few years. And then I do have a book, uh, Practical Salesforce Development Without Code. Um, and that was the first book on APRESS to be printed on Salesforce. Uh, which is pretty exciting because now exciting because they have a very large library there. But that is it's for developers and non-developers alike, but really just focuses on everything you can do declaratively on the platform. And then I do have some courses on Plural Site that um, you may want to check out. So real quickly, and I'll show this slide again later. But here are links to you know all that, so you can grab a screenshot or something if you want to check that out. And you know, I, I would love to connect with you. Um, you know, don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions or, or just want to talk. Um, I'm pretty easy to find online. And also, I just published a new blog post on my blog last week about Spring 22 for Experience Cloud. So definitely check that out. Um, if you do anything with Experience Cloud, you might want to check it out. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. You can post comments on that. And yeah, so there's uh, there's everything you can check out. And so here's what we're going to do today. <clears throat> I'll give you an overview of CMS, a few slides, and then we're going to spend most of the time doing a live demo. I'm, I'm a huge fan of just showing in Salesforce because why not, right? We can we can do it live and, you know, that that's always a little risky because things don't always exactly work as you, you expect, but I, I find that it's um, much more interesting and engaging and fun. And hopefully you feel the same way to actually get into Salesforce and just do it. Um, and then in the recording, you guys can play that back and see exactly what I did and hopefully be able to follow that. So that's our goal for today. So let's get started. Uh, I want to start with why use Salesforce CMS, right? That's an important question. Some of you on here, maybe you aren't using Experience Cloud. That's fine. Um, and maybe you haven't really done anything at all with CMS or heard about it for Salesforce specifically. So let's talk about it. Um, the value is in a few areas. So number one, the ability to use content across various interfaces. So what I mean by that is to actually manage content, right? This is a CMS, content management system. Salesforce has never really had that in the past. Um, yes, sure, you can you know, upload a file or something like that. That's different. That's not the same thing. Uh, the file is basically just the file itself. There's a little bit of metadata, but that's it. With content, it's broader. There's more metadata and you can have various controls around that, um, which gets to the second point here, ability to control which interfaces have access to specific content. So let's say you have a piece of content and you want it available in three uh, Experience Cloud sites, you want it available in 
uh, one instance of Commerce Cloud, but maybe not other uh, sites, you know, and, and not in Marketing Cloud, you can control that centrally uh, and not, not at the code level, right? Um, and that's a big deal. And you can separate the roles as well in terms of who manages it and how that gets managed. Um, declarative application of content within Lightning Components is really big as well. So again, like if we're comparing this to something like just files, um, you have, let's say, take an image if you upload it as a file. Well, great, <clears throat> you have an image, right? Anything, any kind of manipulation or transformation of that file is going to be custom code. That's it. There's nothing, you know, you can't do anything with that image except just show it as is. With content, th there's a lot more to it, a lot more layers um, to this and uh, Salesforce has built out the front end to allow for declarative control of that, which I think is really cool. Um, you can structure custom content. So you can build out your own content types and we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. And again, I, I mentioned this already a few times, but the alternatives don't suffice. They're not, they weren't created to achieve the same goal. You know, files, libraries, attachments, documents, static resources, they all have their place. This isn't to say that content replaces all of those, that, that's not correct. But if you are looking to actually manage content centrally, uh, provide you know, permissions and things like that over the content, you do not want to use those uh, for this because it basically means a lot of customization, uh, which we're trying to avoid here for various reasons. All right, so if we take a step back and say, let's, let's look at Salesforce CMS um, and provide a conceptual view. Let's look at the basics here. So you can see on the right, we have uh, content managers on the left, content in the middle, and uh, Salesforce orgs on the right, where there's a site or community there. So we see number one, multiple types are supported, right? So content, you have to define a type of content. Uh, and by default, there are a few, we'll, we'll get into that, but image, news, document, those are the standard types, but you can create more. Also, the administration and management can be granularly controlled. I mentioned this already. This is a very big deal, right? Um, you can provide a layer of control and there are different levels of permissions. Um, and the way that's granted is even better than just an individual, right? You can, we'll get into the workspace concept in a minute, but you can control, you can administer this the way that content should be administered essentially. Um, access can be controlled as well. So I just mentioned administration, but then there's also access, right? Who can create, who can edit, but then who can see it? Where is it available really is, is, is what we're getting at. Where can this content be made available? And all of that can be controlled centrally and granularly. Uh, and then one content type can be embedded within another. Yeah, you know, that's, that's also an interesting thing. And that also, I think it's a good example to see that, um, you know, with files or something like that, that doesn't make any sense, right? You can't do that. Um, but here you can, you can take an image and embed it within news, for example. All right, let's look at the key components of Salesforce CMS overall. We're gonna start with workspaces. Uh, and this is an area where content is managed, right? This doesn't necessarily, it will get to this in a minute, but it doesn't start with the where it's shown, okay? It's the content, how it's managed and by whom, okay? That's, that's the workspace, right? What There's certain content you can put, create content in a workspace and then determine who can manage it and who has permissions. Um, within that, you can create folders, you can have a directory structure, hierarchical structure, the content then goes in those folders, right? So at the top level, you have workspace, folders within the workspace, and then the content is there as well. You don't actually have to create folders, that's optional. And then channels. So if we look at this uh, diagram on the right, what we're looking at, you can see we have two workspaces, right? Um, we can see there's content 
in each workspace. One of the workspaces has a folder with content in it. That's the one on the right. Um, the workspace on the left has no folders, just a flat um, hierarchy. So the content is there. And then the arrows going up from the workspaces are the channels. So that is a key part of this. Um, you do define the destinations for the content. What are the, um, what or where can you view this content, right? So in this case, we have a few things going on here. We have, you know, multiple communities or sites, uh, Commerce Cloud, Heroku, Marketing Cloud. There are various places where you can show this content. And you can see on the left, that workspace, basically uh, the content in that workspace can just be shown in one of the three sites, okay? Customer community, intranet, partner portal, not in Commerce Cloud, Heroku, Marketing Cloud. On the right, um, that basically, that content you can show in Commerce Cloud, Heroku, Marketing Cloud, and then two of the um, sites that have been created, but not the customer community. Um, these are just examples, but you can see how this is different than anything else that's on the Salesforce platform today, um, barring you know a custom build of something like that. All right, and then the last piece, the last slide really before we dive into the live demo is around uh, the data and presentation layers. So this is another really cool part of this. Um, you know, there's the app itself, which we'll get into where you set up the workspaces, uh, you add the content, all that good stuff. Once that's done, then you have the other piece, which is how to present this. And Salesforce has created some standard components. Now, I will say, these are only in Experience Cloud. Okay, there, there are no standard components in Lightning Experience uh, for use there today. You would have to build a custom component. But in Experience Cloud, um, there are standard components um, that allow you to display the content. So you have CMS Single Item, CMS Collection, CMS Single Item Detail, um, CMS Co Connect, you have two CMS Connect. We're not going to really go into CMS Connect today. Um, CMS Connect allows you to connect to uh, outside systems. You can pull in content from Adobe or WordPress and display it in Salesforce dynamically. It is nice if you do have, you have content already that's in a different system um, that you want to display and you don't want to have redundancy, right? That's, that's nice. You can do that. Um, Salesforce has some good examples. So if you are interested in CMS Connect, Google, CMS Connect, um, Capricorn, Coffee, and maybe Example, and you should be able to find a really great uh, help article that gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to set it up. It's actually really cool. Hopefully Salesforce still has that up um, and it's working. Um, but basically, it allow, it gives you step by step on how to connect to a WordPress blog uh, for Capricorn Coffee, and it'll display it in your Experience Cloud site, and that's that's pretty nice. So you can check that out. Um, and then this is the last piece here. What does it actually support? So we've been talking about the content, right? But Salesforce was smart in the way they approached this, and they considered actual objects as well. So there's an object aspect to this where great, you know, you have the you have the presentation layer and you have the you have the content layer and the presentation layer, right? Um, and at the presentation layer, they were smart to say, well, you know, this isn't just exclusively for content, CMS content. Let's use the presentation layer to display records as well. And we're gonna check that out today. Uh, so I think that'll all come to life for you as we, as we go into that. And that is where even if you're not using Salesforce CMS, like the actual product itself, you can take advantage of what Salesforce has done 
through these components. So again, um, that's where probably everyone here, I want to pay attention because if you do anything at all with Experience Cloud, or again, there's not a standard component for it, but you can kind of see what Salesforce is trying to do. And, and that could be built out in uh, Lightning Experience. That's it for the slides, other than I'll show a couple at the end uh, with some contact information and next steps. Uh, but let's get to work. So um, I, I have really done very little to start, and that's on purpose, um, because I think sometimes if you seed everything too much, uh, you know, you get questions like, well, how did you get to that point? What did you do before that? So I really haven't done very much at all. Um, in advance. The only thing I did was I created a site because it can take a few minutes and you don't want to sit here and, and watch a site being created. Um, but I haven't configured it or anything. I just created a site uh, for our purposes. So let's get to work. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to App Launcher. All right. And we're going to view all. And we're going to grab the Digital Experiences app. Um, personally, I like to do this just to make it simpler. Uh, just move these up. There we go. Let's move this to the front. Um, and then I did create this site, which I'm going to move up as well. Um, by the way, if you don't do that, that's very handy to uh, change the order in your app launcher. Okay, so we have digital experiences. Now note, this has changed. The name has changed. So if you have seen Salesforce CMS before and you're, you're a little confused, that app was just renamed. It used to be Salesforce CMS and Salesforce renamed it to Digital Experiences. The idea behind that was it was confusing because they're kind of combining sites or digital experiences um, with CMS and they had one page with both. And so it was a little weird because they called it CMS, but it had sites on it as well. You'll see that in a second. By the way, you hear me say site, that is the official new term to replace community. Everybody still knows community. Actually, most people I know still say community. So it's, uh, I wouldn't say, you know, you can't say that. Of, of course, you can. People know what that means. But um, since the rebrand from community cloud to experience cloud, uh, site is the official term that Salesforce uses to uh, refer to what was previously called a community. All right. So let's go to digital experiences. All right, so welcome. You can see I haven't even uh, you know, ignored this message here. Uh, welcome to this app. Don't show this again. Okay, great. Now, here, there's nothing here. There's really nothing we can do. And that's because we need to set up uh, access. So let's do that. So let's go in here. Let's go to the profile. Uh, we'll just do sysadmin, all right? And we're going to add, first I'll show you here, obviously we have access to the digital experiences app, but I just want to show you where that is. So here it is. You can see it, you know, used to be called Salesforce CMS. You can see the developer name is still Salesforce CMS there. And I have access to that. So for some reason you can't see the app, just come in here and give yourself access. Um, that might happen in an older org. You might not have access to it. So just keep that in mind. So if you're following along or something, Go to apps and add access. Okay, so let's go back and we need to provide access to some tabs that are within the digital experiences app. Uh, Salesforce doesn't provide access to sales for, to the system administrator um, by default. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, and yes, let's go here. And so we'll do, I'll just, Go ahead and start, uh, let's go CMS and we'll see here. So object settings, within object, object settings, we'll see these. So we'll just drill down here. All right, now within here, you'll see the tabs, you know, this is all mixed together in this, in this view. Also, some of the tabs were renamed, okay? So what I'm gonna show you is the go forward naming. Um, Everything used to have CMS at the beginning of the tab name, and now they've mixed it up, which I'm not sure I love, but you know it is what it is. So let's start with all sites. And you can see tab hidden. Let's change that. Default on. Great. We'll also do, um, and I'll just go directly to these now, but you could see you could do it that way. So CMS channels. 
Let's make that visible. And then CMS workspaces. All right. And then the final one will be digital experiences home. All right, we'll do this. Hopefully, we, there we go. Digital experiences home. Okay. So now we've given access to all these tabs. Great. And like I said, I could have done that in advance, but I just want you to see everything so nothing's missed. All right, so digital experiences, let's go back. Now we should have access to um, all the tabs. All right, here they are. So we're on the home page right now. We are going to start by creating a workspace, all right? So we click on add workspace and you can see down below, I, I did create uh, a site, all right? Apex hours in space. We're going to, we're going to go with the space themed uh, site today, just thought I'd do something different. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a workspace. So we'll say, let's call it Apex Hours um, and leave it at that. That's our Apex Hours workspace for that specific site that we've created. We'll go next. Now I'm going to select it. This is where you can add a channel. So what I'm doing right now is saying for all available channels, where do I want this content to be potentially available for use or to be available for use. I don't have anything else even to select. I don't have to select anything right now, uh, but I will. So we're going to make the content in this workspace available in the site I created. Add contributors. Nope, I have no one to add right now, but you could add someone. So if you wanted to make someone, uh, give someone access to control the content here, you could do that. For languages, um, I'll select English and make that the default and you get a summary and I'll click done. All right, great. So that's done. So I've created the workspace, right? Pretty straightforward. Now let's create some content. So I'll go in here and first I'll create an image. All right. And you can see this is a little different, like different from files, right? Where you just uploading just that actual file and any metadata is really just uh, uploaded automatically, you know, with that file. Um, this is different because you have some additional content here. So let's go ahead and upload files and let's do, um, let's do this. We have a few images today. We'll do this. Uh, we're going to upload, yeah, the shuttle image. Okay, so like I said, everything's gonna be space themed. So that's getting uploaded. And we get a preview of that, great. Um, we can add a link to thumbnail, we're not going to do that. Alt text, so what I'm gonna do there is actually just to have some filler, I'll just grab some text over here. This is handy for demos, by the way. Um, and we'll just drop that in for alt text. And there's a content slug. We're not going to change any of that. So there's not a ton of metadata to add, but there is some. Um, and let's go ahead and save draft. And I'm going to go ahead and actually publish this image. Okay. So right now it's draft. So you, it can't be used on a live page. So let's publish. All right. That's done. Um, great. So we've just created, we just published some content, right? We published an image. Uh, let's go back to in our workspace here and let's do this. Let's create a news, a piece of news content. Now this is, this is richer than the image itself because we have, uh, so we'll give it a title and let's say, um, you know, interested in going to space and we're going to have an article here for the body. Yeah, we'll do this again. See if this works. Uh, hopefully, yep. Just paste that in. We lose the line breaks, but it's fine. Okay. So we have the body. And then this is where it gets pretty cool. So banner image. Let's click here. Um, I can do one of two things. I can add content directly. So I can upload from my desktop or I can select from something already here. All right. So you see it's embedded, which is interesting. Um, and, and this is where, like, I, I don't want you to miss this. That's useful because someone 
could manage that banner image separately from the actual news content. So maybe there's a, you know, let's say there was a logo on it and that logo was, you know, maybe they're not allowed to put that logo on the image, um, but they don't really want the person editing it to change the you know, news content itself. Well, they can just go in and change the banner image and it'll automatically flow through, which is nice. All right, let's save draft. Now, earlier this morning, I was having an odd issue with publishing embedded content. Hopefully this will work. It looks like it's good. Okay, yes, it was, I was in a, I was in the spring 22 pre-release org and um, that's really always a no-no when you're demoing because weird stuff can happen. So, okay, so we've published that as well. So we published a one image and then we published uh, news that was that contained that image. All right, so we haven't shown it anywhere yet, right? We're just adding the content. Now I'm going to add, um, let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna add a folder and just say, space images and i'm going to add some content here same deal you can click create or add all right so let's add some images um and i'll just be quicker about this so here we go we have some images here to add these we'll save draft so i'm not going to add any um additional content well we'll just say i'll just yeah, actually, I'll leave that just for time's sake. So save draft. Great. Uh, we'll publish that. All right, we'll go back to the folder. All right, let's add a few more images. And you'll see what we're going to do with this in a little bit. All right, here's two second image of the sky. And we'll save draft. Once that's saved, great. And we'll publish that. All right. And let's do one more. We'll do one more image. And here we go. All right. So we have three up there. Save draft. Perfect. And we'll publish this as well. All right, so just to recap where we're at, we created the workspace, we connected it to a channel, then we added an image, which we embedded within news. We also um, created a folder with some additional images. <clears throat> and you saw there were some other files there. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, I will point out, um, notice up here, upgrade this limited version of Salesforce CMS. So is does CMS require payment? Is it a paid license? Uh, sort of. Uh, there's There are two levels of it. There's a free version and a paid version. Um, if you're just checking it out, obviously, you don't need the paid version. Uh, the paid version gets into limits and things like that. Basically, if you work for a larger company and you're really heavily using Salesforce CMS with, you have a lot of content, essentially, then you may need to upgrade. And I think that, you know, with pricing, always check with, you know, account executive or something like that. Um, at least the last I heard it was, it's 10,000 US dollars a year um, to get access to the premium version. But again, to check this out, you know, all of you can get this in a dev org. Uh, you can access the free version. So, um, yep, that's that note. Okay, so we've we've created this. Now what we're going to do is actually go into, um, and by the way, I mentioned this before, but you can create the custom content types. Go to App Exchange. you just search for content type, custom content type creator. You can then set up more content types than what we saw. So image document news, you can add more uh, than that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do before we actually go into the community is something a little different. I mentioned before about records. So we're going to do something different here. Um, we're going to, I'm going to show you how to connect objects, object records in um, through Salesforce CMS. So let's do this. And so I have a few products for somebody interested in going to space. 
I, uh, I grabbed a few images and we're just going to create um, these products. So we have space boots, you know, and you never, you got to make sure you can walk around on uh, wherever you're at. Let's put in the product code SPBTS. Um, we don't have a product family set up. That's fine. Um, we will, let's, let's grab some new text here. I'll put that in. Drop that in. Great. Save and new. All right. We also have some space food. Now you need that dehydrated food to eat up there. All right. Um, we'll put none and then we'll grab some additional text. And then we'll do one more. And that was um, a helmet. Got to have that helmet. Very important. All right. Active. And we'll do that. None. And one more time, just grab some text here. Perfect. All right. All right. So we're creating these three uh, products. Now, that's fine, right? Nothing too exciting there. But we need to do one other thing. What we want to do is make this rich. We want to have an image overlay. This is one of the coolest things. It's, it's not that complicated, but it's, a, it's really pretty neat um, if you think about it and kind of changes how you might think about records within Experience Cloud specifically. Uh, so let's go to product, a right, product here. Um, and we're going to go to the page layout. Uh, by default, there's a field called display URL that is not shown. So uh, here, let's do this. Let's drop a new section here. We don't need to show it. We'll make it one column. Great. And then let's drop display URL in that section. Save. All right. Um, system admin already has access uh, to that. So now let's refresh. Okay. So we have display URL, um, but we need some actual images. So we need a URL to display those images. So I am going to, now this is where it gets a little bit interesting um, in terms of like the association of content with records. For this case, I'm actually going to upload these aesthetic resources. Now I'm not necessarily saying this is the right way to do this. I'm definitely not the only way to do this, um, but this is, this is one way to do it. You can use a file or something else as well. You can use an external URL, just so you know. Um, the point here is it's any URL that's publicly accessible is essentially what you want for your image. And then you'll have to make it available in, in uh, CSP, which we'll show you in a second. Okay, so let's do this. Um, let's do space helmet and let's choose, there it is. And we'll say save. Oh, that's right. What am I thinking? No spaces allowed here. All right, save. All right, and now let's do another one. Right, here we go. Space boots. There they are. Uh, let's go ahead and save. And the last one will be see the space food. All right, so we have these three images, right? And let me do this real quick. Let's, let's go ahead and just go directly to the image URL so I can reference them. So I open them in new tabs. This shows zero bytes. So I obviously did something wrong with that. So let's do that one more time. All right, save. And that one, there we go. Uh, there we go. Okay, that works. So I'm, I'm basically just going, getting the URL of each of these, right? That's all I'm doing right now. Okay, great. I could right click and copy, but I'll just show you. So here are the images, right? So let's go back here. Uh, space helmet. Let's edit. There's display URL. Let's grab that. Let's put that in here, save, right? Good, I'm done with that. I'm gonna close that. Uh, let me move this out of the way. All right, so that's that space food. Let's grab the URL, let's put that in. I am moving quickly, uh, but you can always replay this. I just wanna be quick uh, to not spend too long on all the setup. 
All right, and then we want space boots as well. So let's grab this one, space boots, and let's edit, drop that in. Okay, so now we have three products. Each has an, a, a URL for a publicly available image, or at least an image available to Salesforce. Um, and since it's a static resource in this public, it would be publicly accessible. Um, okay, so we have that done. So now uh, let's get to the fun part. So let's go back and let's go ahead and go to our site, which are, again, I haven't done anything with. And okay, I haven't even published it yet. So I need to go in the other way. So let's type in EXP for digital experiences, all sites. And then we'll go to Builder. All right, great. We don't need to see that. I am going to change the theme. Salesforce wants to reload my page. Okay, fine. Um, all right, so let's do that real fast. Let's change theme. Just make this look a little nicer. We're going to go with this, the Cypress. We'll activate the theme and then we'll just do, I'm going to do just a couple minor things, get rid of some of the stuff that's already on the page and then we're going to bring all this to life and you can see how, um, how you might use Salesforce CMS specifically in Experience Cloud. Okay, so there we go. Um, theme is activated. So let's do a couple things here. Now this, right, what I'm doing right now is not specifically related to CMS, but we just want this experience to look nice. So let's do that. Um, let's say, okay, we're going to do this. Uh, We'll say, going to space, join us. Yes, kind of silly, but um, just having fun with that. And then background, let's change the image. And we're going to upload an image, uh, one of these images that I didn't already use. Let's see how this one looks. And let's see here, well, that one, okay. There we go. Well, okay, you can't see too much of it, but there's the moon back there. We will, let's center it, see how that looks. There we go, sounds good. Um, okay, so we have that. I'm And I'm just gonna get rid of all these components down here. Let's just clear them out. We don't want these. They're not gonna help us out today. So let's delete, let's delete here and just a couple more, clear them out. And then we'll drop our components in. Okay, so let's do a few things. All right, so I'll just go ahead and publish at least as a starting point. Great, so now, now let's, uh, let's get to work here. Let's go to components, the component tab on the left. We'll type in CMS and you can see, um, and I could have also just gone to the content section there, but CMS, um, so let's do this. We're going to start with CMS single item. So I, I mentioned before uh, CMS Connect, we're not, not going to do anything with that today, but you can see those components there. So CMS single item, let's drag and drop. Okay, so there's nothing there. Well, that's because I have to actually select the content. So you'll see over here in property editor, I click on add content. We see a few different things. Well, I really wanted to show this article interested in going to space, right? And that has my embedded image within it. So I select that save, right? And here we go. Pretty plain right now, not much going on. Well, that's, that's where this really gets pretty interesting. And that's under content layout. Um, so we again, we already uh, selected the content. Now we have to configure the content layout. Um, so the very first thing I'm going to do so that you can see it visually, I don't want to do all the work before anything comes to life is go to field mappings. And this is such a cool concept. Um, I love how Salesforce did this. So headline makes sense to map to the title, right? And there you can see right there, the news article title just showed up. Subheading, if we want to include that, we can. Um, we can say excerpt. That's fine. We'll do that. An image. So we just simply map to the banner image there. So that was not very hard, right? That was pretty cool. Um, 
and you can drill down by clicking on view you can go to that actual article we're not going to do that today or that content detail page there is so much more you can do here um, you can see i mean i can with a click i can change the layout right uh, that actually looks better i might keep it that way card you can do as well you can put it on the side um, actually i'll leave it there so you can do that um, there's so much stuff you can do component style vertical alignment you can change you know the, obviously the size of the image the text you can add links you can control buttons really really cool stuff you know basic effects you can say um, you know if i hover over the image then what happens you see i just clicked one setting and now you have kind of a nice effect here when i hover over that actual article. So that that's really where I think a lot of the value comes in is that in that uh, presentation layer, there's just so much more I could go through. And then, yeah, you could just show or hide whatever you want. Really cool stuff. So great. We have our, our, our blog or our news uh, content there that has the embedded uh, image content. Now, what else do we want to do? Let's uh, want to do a couple of things. Let's actually do a little advertising of those products, okay? Um, actually, before that, since we're here, let's go ahead and show some images. So let's do, um, actually, sorry, we do need to leave this page no matter what we do next. So let's go to um, content management and we're going to create two collections here, all right? So the first one is going to be based on products. Those are, um, objects obviously standard objects so we're, we need to add a connection for that so here under content management we see salesforce crm go to add crm connections and we'll type in prod for product select that save okay now there's another step that we have to do actually and this is pretty interesting so what the fields that are available for the presentation layer um, that is driven by the um, actual list view, all right? Let me just say that again. So the list view drives what fields are available in the presentation layer of Salesforce CMS. Let me set this up and, and it might make more sense. By the way, I've said don't show this again twice already. So um, I don't know why that keeps showing up. All right, so let's, let's, go, let's go ahead and create a new list view. All right, well, let's, we'll call it um, you know, space images here, or these are products, sorry. Space products, the list API name doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll just one second here, there we go. All right, and we'll see, everyone can see it. All right, so let's do a couple things. First, let's filter. We didn't create a family, but we did say, um, we did start all the product codes with SP. So let's say product code starts with SP, okay? And now you can see we have only what we want there, great. And let's do select fields to display. We don't care about, pro so product name, code description, those are fine. Product family, we don't care about. Um, we do care about display URL. That has to be in the list view. That's really what I'm getting at is if you, if you store an image URL in this field and you want to you know, point that to the image um, part of the, the presentation layer, you have to include it in this list view. So let's save. Okay, great. So we've, we're done there, right? We've created this list view. Now let's go back and let's get to work here. One second, let me move this out of the way. Okay, so, all right, here we are. So if we go to collections now, let's create a collection. And we'll, we'll just say, you know, we'll call it space products, Salesforce CRM, right? You got to select Salesforce CRM. Next, product is the only approved one. We just created that connection a minute ago. That's why it shows up here. And that's why nothing else shows up. So I select product, product. Now all available list views show up. There, there's always the all list view. And then there's what we created, space products, finish, right? Awesome. So now I, I've created a collection. Keep in mind, it's dynamic, right? Your list view 
will, I mean, that you set the criteria for your list view and based on that criteria, there may be different records in it on a given day, right? And that's pretty cool. So this um, will dynamically show whatever that list view renders. Um, we also uh, want to create a second collection here. And this one is based on CMS content. So we'll just say space images, CMS content, next. Now you can do it manually or conditionally. I'll just show you what this looks like. So we're going to select image. You have to select type. You can't combine types there. Um, if you were to do conditionally, I mean, there's not a whole lot. You can, you know, use topics. You can use publish date title. Okay, so not not that much there. Um, and we're just going to do manual. All right. So next, and so I uploaded. I created that folder and I put those three sky images in there. We're going to select those three. All right, so I'm creating a collections manual. So that means it's static and I'll click finish. Okay, so just to recap, I created two collections. Now let's go back to our community here. We'll close that tab and yeah, here we go. Let's go to builder. And now let's, let's drop these on the page. So Let's do this, or I'm gonna use the sidebar and I'm going to use the content header. So let's do CMS collection. Let's drop the products here, all right? So add collection, space products, save. All right, so now it's, it's similar to before, right? When we added the single item, it was pretty plain. Not much is going on yet. Well, that's because we have to map the content. So under content layout, we go to field mappings, Headline, obviously product name, right? No brainer. Subheading, um, you know, we have a choice here. We can do product code or we could do a product description. Um, let's actually do description uh, for now. We'll leave it there. Now image, we want display URL. So let's select that. Okay, so now you see uh, this error message or really it's a warning, all right? And what do we do about this? This has to do with CSP, content security policy. Um, we have to add these sites. So let me just click on this link and you'll see this is CSP right here, content security policy, trusted sites. I'm gonna click okay. Now, here's what you can do. There are sometimes when this doesn't always work, but let's go to settings and we'll go to security and privacy and Salesforce is nice to tell us, hey, you have CSP errors. This is from the last 30 days. So I can click on allow URL, okay? And great, so it says, okay. So I'm still getting that. Let me refresh here. Okay, one sec, so let's go here. And so it's not showing up, but I'm still getting the error. So what I'm going to do, let me refresh this page real quick. And we're almost done. We will wrap up on time here. So this was trusted. Um, let me do this really quickly. Edit. I'm going to set that to all. Um, and that should, that should work. This is, unfortunately, this happens sometimes. Let me see here. Let me grab that. Try this again. So yeah, it's showing that it's fine, right? Everything's there. We can see the URL here. And I think this is the same URL, but let me just go ahead and add it in here again. And let's go back. See if this works. One second, let's refresh the page. Okay, so I'm getting that. Um, and I'm gonna try one. One additional thing here. Let's go back. Yeah, those were the same. You can do this as well. You can do like a star. And we'll save. We'll just do everything. It's just image that we care about. And this happened, uh, this happened the last time I did this as well. Of course, this morning it was working just perfectly. Let me refresh 
the whole thing. No, nope. okay, so we're still getting that error. So this is kind of a pain sometimes um, with the CSP. And I'm sure later today, you'll get it working. Um, I'm, I'm really not sure. I, it's just basically there's some, for whatever reason you saw that I added it directly, that should automatically work. Sometimes it does take a few minutes. So I'm gonna come back to that and it might actually just show up. While we're waiting though, let me do the last step, CMS collection. And this one will be for our images. So let's go ahead and add a collection and we're going to do the space images. Okay, we have to do the mappings as well here. All right, so let's do field mappings, uh, headline, we'll do title, subheading, we can do, we don't really need anything, we'll say none, image, um, we'll do source. All right, now those are popping up, you can see that. Um, and of course you can do, uh, you know, we can change the layout here, collection layout. Um, let's do a carousel instead. So instead of three narrow columns on the right, let's do this. Okay, cool. So that's good. We're going to autoplay the slides and, you know, we don't really need the button. So we're going to hide that. Let's hide the button. So I'm gonna select that. Okay, so the, yeah, the, the images, image titles aren't too exciting here, but you can see this is pretty nice. I mean, we uploaded a few images. We created a carousel very easily and we can control that further for sure in the future. So let me refresh that. And look what I said, perfect. Okay, so it wasn't me. It was Experience Builder. It just, sometimes it takes, not, however CSP works in the background, um, it sometimes takes a little while. So let me publish one more time. Okay, great. This is it. Let me go to the publish site. And we can take a look at this. All right, so this is pretty cool. So we created this in a few minutes using Salesforce CMS. So we have product records that have images associated with them. We have a news article and we have images as well on the right. So we actually added quite a bit um, for sure in this short period of time. So hopefully that's exciting for you guys to see. That was it for the live demo. Next steps, Trailhead, uh, there's Salesforce CMS basics. Um, honestly, I don't know if it's going to be anything more than what you just saw here, but you could go check that out and get the badge. And then if, you're, if you work for a Salesforce partner, you can become a Salesforce CMS accredited professional. So definitely check that out. Um, again, if you didn't get the links before, you can grab some, uh, you can grab a screenshot now. Um, and I know I didn't leave a ton of time for questions. I think I may have time for a couple, but uh, really you can reach out to me for sure. There's my Twitter handle. Uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. So I am 100% happy to answer questions. Um, it might not be immediately right after this session, but uh, you can definitely reach out. So with that, I thank you. And um, that is it for today's content. Hopefully you got a lot out of that. And um, up to you, Amit, if, if we want to wrap or if you have a minute for questions, I know we're almost at the top of the hour here. Yep, thank you, Phil. Like, we'll not take too much, too many questions. Let me uh, read it out a couple of questions, not more than that. So, very first question, how does the license work with the Salesforce CMS? It is per user basis or how? Uh, great question. It's for the entire org. So, yeah, it's, again, this can change, but it's $10,000, um, I believe, per year, and that's for the entire org, so not per user. Um, and yes, I'm here in the chat. So let me just quickly see, are there size limitations regarding images content or do standard limits apply file size? You know what? That is a great question. I believe that the limits are, are going to be the same or similar to files. Um, I will follow up on that one, but they're, they're larger, right? So they're, you don't have like some you know, uh, low uh, kind of limit on that but I will find out. So I don't know, but I've never run into an issue where something I uploaded, you know, it aired because it was too large or something like that. Can you upload videos? Yes. 
Um, yeah, and that's where with custom content types, you can actually do some interesting stuff there with videos. Um, so yes, videos can be a part of this. It just takes a little bit more work. Um, well, yeah, so the CSP was for the community. It, um, and I set it to all, which is for Lex and community. But that's, yeah, what actually have just to be clear, it was literally that it takes sometimes five minutes. I've seen that before many times. It's kind of frustrating because you want it to work right away, but um, it was set properly, but it, it, for whatever reason, uh, it takes a couple minutes to kick in. Um, I did it this morning in a different org and it actually was immediate. So I'm not exactly sure why. Um, limits of the free solution. Yeah, that's a good question. I should have that as a quick reference, but if you just Google Salesforce CMS license limits or you know free paid, I'm pretty sure you'll find a Salesforce article and it'll give you limits. And I think it has to do with basically the number of content um, items that you're using, um, maybe the channels or something like that. Um, so just Google that and you'll be able to find that. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. CMS Connect, yeah blogs um you can just google actually i have some stuff out there on that i think i may have done a presentation where i show that so you can try to google if you just google my name and cms connect see what's out there um because i have walked through it before but again if um if you want to go to the salesforce article just google cms connect capricorn coffee example and it'll go through exactly what you need to do. It's really cool and it works beautifully. I've, I've used that multiple times. Um, and I think that's it for the question. So I think the timing here is great. Again, you can feel free to reach out if you want. Um, here's all my information and Amit, it's an honor to be on. Thank you so much.